All right. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to our 9 o'clock prayer again this morning. Thank you for being with us. If you got your Bible, we're going to be in Psalms 39. We're just going to read verses 1 through 5 today. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, in Jesus' name, thank you for our lesson this morning. We ask you to bless it now. And we thank you, Lord, for the strength you've given us, for the mercy you've shown us, Lord God, for the righteousness you've given us. Pray, Lord God, you bless this lesson. Give us the right word to say. Hearts, minds, ready to receive it. Help us to live and do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 39. Good morning, Kate. First one, I said, I will take heed to my ways, that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle while the wicked is before me. I was dumb with silence. I held my peace even from good, and my sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me while I was musing the fire burned. Then I spake with my tongue, Lord, make me to know mine end, and the measure of my days and what it is, that I may know how frail I am. Because thou hast made my days as a hand breath, and mine age is nothing before thee. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Selah. Amen. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning, Joshua. Brother Larry. Sister Cindy. Welcome, everyone. Glad that you're here again today. And sometimes you got to give yourself a little pep talk. you got to give yourself a little bit of encouragement. I don't know how many of you, but I do. I talk to myself all the time because sometimes I feel like I'm the only one who listens to me. <laughs> I said, I will take heed to my ways. I said to myself, I, sometimes I, I even look at myself in the mirror. I said, Lee, are you listening to what you preach? Are you actually doing what you preach? Because the Lord's going to hold you accountable for every word that you say. Now, are you actually living what you say to others? So we have to have to let that little talk and have a little bit of time to commune with the Lord and say, you know, I will take heed. That means I'm going to pay attention. I'm going to listen to even the words that I preach. Paul told Timothy, he says, when you give yourself completely to these things, not only will you save others, you will save yourself. Because if you preach to others and you don't practice this yourself, you're going to go lost. So look at yourself in the mirror today. Look at yourself and say, I'm going to listen to the words that are being preached to me, the words that are spoken to me. I will take heed to my ways that I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my tongue with a bridle while the wicked is before me. If you think about what the James talks about, how your tongue is an unruly evil and full of deadly poison. It has no bones, but it can, it can break people's hearts. It can break people in half. You can destroy somebody with your tongue. So he says, I'm going to have to make sure that every word that I say, Colossians tells us, let your words be seasoned with salt. In other words, how's this taste if I had to eat them myself? How would I take it if somebody were to talk to me the way I'm talking to them? You know, if I had to eat those words, how would it taste coming back into my mouth? Is it seasoned in a way where I say, man, that's pretty good? Or would I say, man, that's pretty nasty? I probably shouldn't have said that. But let our words be seasoned with salt. Let our, that it may give grace to the hearers, those that hear us. I say, Lord, I'm going to keep my tongue with a bridle. It's like when you have a horse and you put the bridle on the horse and you control it. So it doesn't go left or right. It goes right where you want it to go. Control your tongue. And there's some people say, I can't control my tongue. Well, maybe you didn't get saved because the Lord doesn't save 90% of you. He saves all of you, including your tongue. Right? Man can't control it. The Bible says a tongue is an unruly evil and no man can tame it. But God can. God can. When we listen to the words of the Lord, he's the one who gives us the discipline in order sometimes just to even bite our tongue. Sometimes you know, there's a proverb that says, when somebody says something bad about you, sometimes you just need to just shut up and not say anything. And just Everybody has a bad day. Everybody has a moment when they make a mistake. We only make it worse. The Bible says, uh, another place I think it's Isaiah, Proverbs 15, he says, a soft answer turneth away wrath. Mm -hmm. 
but grievous words. If you're yelling at me and I'm yelling right back at you, all we're going to do is yell at each other. He said, but a soft answer turneth away wrath. That's what, keeping my tongue in a bridle so I can control it. You know, Jeremiah, he, he saw, he, in these next few verses, he says, I was done with silence I held my peace, easing from good. My sorrow was stirred. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, while I was thinking, the fire burned. There's just something that was shut up in my bones, and I just had to get it out. I tried my best to be quiet. And Jeremiah, he said, I'm never going to speak in the Lord's name again. I'm not going to talk, and I'm not going to pray. He said, but I could not because his, his, his power, his spirit, his love, his mercy, his joy was such was so strong. It was like a fire shut up in my bones where I could not be quiet any longer. My heart was hot within me. While I was musing, while I was thinking. You know, a lot of writers, they get, they get writer's block. And sometimes they need a muse or something to kind of break that block from them having something to say. A muse is, is, is something that gives us a little bit of uh, something to think about, a, a little bit of focus where we can actually say what we're really thinking. And there's nothing wrong with thinking before you speak. That's actually what we should all be doing, right? So he said, uh, Lord, maybe he was saying, maybe I should not even ask God. Maybe I don't even want to know the answer to this question. But I'm going to ask it anyway. Lord, make me to know mine end. And the measure of my days. What is it? That I may know how frail I am. I mean... You can look back. My mom, me and my wife have been married 30 years, been together 35 years. And you know, back when I was a kid, 30 years was you as an old person. Now as you look back and you say, man, that, I'm sorry I said that. Because <laughs> that's not old. You know, a lot of us are a lot older now. And we're getting a whole lot closer to the Lord's coming than we've ever been before. We're going to see the Lord face to face shoot sooner rather than later. So are we getting where we need to be with the Lord? Lord, do you understand just how frail we are? We're one breath away from seeing God. One breath. Look at Psalms, Proverbs chapter 4. I was in here a little bit yesterday, but this verse, the path of the just is as a shining light. Our life is this light. And that shineth more and more. And getting closer and closer unto that perfect day. And what is that perfect day? Well, if you're saved from sin and you're living for the Lord and you're being obedient to God, that perfect day is the day that you get to go see the Lord. Paul says, it's better for me to be absent here so I can be present there. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more death. For all the former things are passed away. It, our life is like a shining light. And it shines more and more as we get closer and closer to the last day of our life. We should be closer to the Lord today than we were 10 years ago. If you've been serving the Lord for a while, you should be, your light should be brighter and brighter and brighter. He says, though our outward man perish, yet our inward man is renewed day by day. We are getting closer and closer to the Lord. Lord, let me know mine end and how and the measure of my days. If the lifespan is 70 to 80 years and you're past 50, there are more days behind you than there are days in front of you. Just, I mean, just put things in perspective how close we are to seeing the Lord. He says that I may know how frail I am or what time I have left. And if we know we only got a certain amount of time left to do something for God, why are we still sitting on our hands? Why are we still letting grass grow under our feet? 
Why are we settled on our leaves? Why are we pining away in our sins? Why aren't we getting closer and doing more and more and more? I may be getting older. You know, why wait till you're 80 and say, well, I need to do something for God. How about do it now? You understand? Time is short. Time is short. That I may know just how frail I am. Then he says, Behold, thou hast made my days as in hand breadth. The hand breadth is the distance between your pinky and your thumb. And if you look at your hand, mine's about eight inches. My life's about eight inches long compared to eternity. Compared, just compared to eternity, whether it's eternity with the Lord or eternity in hell, we got a very short window to get things right. And sometimes you just need to have this little talk with yourself. I said I will take heed to my ways. I'll do it tomorrow. You know, that's what the devil tells you. He's not going to tell you that Jesus is fake. He's not going to tell you that hell's not real. He's not going to tell you that heaven's not real. He's not going to tell you all of those things. What he will tell you is that you got to tell tomorrow. Wait until tomorrow. Put it off until tomorrow. But what the scripture tells us is that we don't know what's going to be on tomorrow. We don't even know if there's going to be a tomorrow. If we wake up tomorrow, we can say, praise the Lord. Thank you for another day. But Jesus says in Matthew 6, 24, he says what? 34. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Take no thought. Don't worry about what's happening tomorrow. There's enough going on today. Lord helps to get closer. Time is short. And he says, mine age. And Peter writes, he says, a day with the Lord says a thousand years and a thousand years as a day. So 80 years of life, 90, well, maybe you have lived to be 100. Compared to eternity, it's nothing. So what should we be doing? Paul writes in Romans 13, he tells us to wake up. It's high time that we wake out of sleep, right? He says, and now, and Romans 13, verse 11, that now, I'm sorry, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to wake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It is, we are getting closer and closer and closer unto that perfect day. Our light should be shining brighter and brighter as we get closer and closer unto that perfect day our salvation is near the night is far spent the day is at hand let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light and let us walk honestly i said i will take heed to myself and paul says let us walk honestly Give yourself a full check. Examine yourself to see if you be in the faith. See if you, if the Lord would come for you today. And if you look at that and answer that question honestly. I was visiting with a woman in a hospital a few years ago. And she was in her 70s. She was sick. And she was on her deathbed. And I looked at her and I prayed with her. And then I was about to walk out the door and the Lord said, you need to go ask her if she's right. If she's ready to go. So I walked back into the room and I grabbed her by the hand and I said, ma'am, if the Lord would come for you today, would you be ready to go? And she said, no, preacher. Then I asked her, I said, well, then do you want to pray and ask the Lord to save you and get right? And she said, yes. And we prayed right there in her hospital bed and she gave her life to the Lord because why? She was honest with herself. I'm ready to go be with the Lord, but then you're still fornicating and lying and stealing. You're not ready. Being honest is you know you're failing in some place that you got to get those things fixed. And then you're able to say, Lord, it's me. It's me standing in the need of prayer. Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. That's being honest with the Lord. Well, I'm good enough like I am. I do all these good deeds. Pathway to hell is paved with good intentions. Good works don't get you into heaven. It's only if your heart, is, and, and it's only if you give your heart to the Lord and the blood of Jesus Christ covers all of your sins, then you get to make it into heaven. No matter what kind of good things that you've done. 
Paul says in Ephesians 2, verse 8, that we are saved by grace through faith. And it's, an, it's a gift of God. And it's not of yourselves, not of works, lest any man should boast. We have to believe in Jesus Christ. We have to be honest with ourselves, confess our sins. And the Lord said he is faithful and just and he will forgive. Behold, Lord, my days are short. Help me to understand that. That I got work that needs to be done. That I'm, I got things I got to get fixed. There's people I need to say I'm sorry to. And if you've hurt people and you know you've hurt them and you have an opportunity to make things right, then go make them right. Maybe there's a brother or a sister, a mom or a dad, somebody you hadn't spoken to in a while. What you waiting on? Why are you still harboring these grudges? Why are we still having bitterness and envy in our heart? If you're getting closer to the end, you need to make these things right. Do it before it's too late. Look at the book of James, chapter 3. I think it is. Verse 13, we talked about wisdom yesterday. He said, who is a wise man and do with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness and wisdom. Let your words, Lord, that fix my mouth. I will keep my tongue with a bridle. He says, and let, your, let him show out of a good conversation his work with meekness and wisdom. But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. The devil wants you to have hatred in your heart. He wants you to harbor grudges. He wants you to be bitter. He wants you to be envious. He wants you to be this way. God doesn't. These are the works of the flesh. We need the fruit of the Spirit, right? He says, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above, it's first, it's pure and peaceable gentle and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Go make your peace. Sow it. And then you'll reap it. If we sow peace, that's exactly what we're going to reap. But if we sow bitter and envy, that's exactly what we're going to reap. Galatians chapter 6, he says, Be not mocked, God, be not, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. God's not going to be mocked. For what's, if we sow to the flesh, we shall of the flesh reap corruption. But if we sow to the Spirit, we shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Amen? So he's, these five verses should help us think today. Where am I with the Lord? Paul even writes in Corinthians, he says, examine yourself. Mm -hmm. Paul, I mean, David writes in Psalms 139, 23, 24. He says, Lord, search me and try me and see if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. We got to have talks with ourselves. We need to encourage ourselves. We need to look at ourselves in the mirror and see where we are with the Lord. Sometimes it's really, and the Bible even tells us it's hard for a man to see his own faults. Mm -hmm. Double, do a double take. All right? Lord, make me to know my end and the measure of my days. What is it that I may know how frail I am? Help me, Lord Jesus, to listen to these words to me. These are words of wisdom. I get those things fixed that are broken. And renew and fix relationships that I may have caused to be broken. Make an effort. Time is short. And God is good. Amen? All right, that's all I got for today. Thank you for joining us. And God is good. Love you. Appreciate you being with us again this morning. And good Lord willing, uh, we will see you guys more.